But one has to ask for the meaning and say, God, why do you talk that way? Well, he says, haven't I told you all along I don't like to talk that way? On Mount Carmel, there was fire, you remember, and all of that? But then I told Elijah later, you know, I don't like all this wind, earthquake, and fire. I love to talk in the still, small voice. And Elijah got the message. So I think that that story, it isn't so much, what a victory for God over the worshipers of Baal. It's that too. But that's the setting for one of the most important truths in the Bible. Our God, who so often has raised his voice, knows he runs the risk of being feared and mocked by the devil even for doing so. He's made it plain he'd much rather talk softly, so we trust him and, and obey him without fear. If a father were walking with his son in the mountains and the son wandered over near a, uh, a steep precipice and was unaware of it, and the father, realizing the hazards, says softly, stop right where you are. You know, don't shout, he might fall over. Stay right where you are, but the son doesn't hear. And you raise your voice, and the wind is blowing the wrong way, and the sun still doesn't hear. And finally, in desperation and at some risk, you shout at the top of your lungs, Son, stop right where you are. Don't you dare take another step. And people coming up the trail below say, Look at that brutish father bellowing at his poor little boy. And later they come up and they apologize. They know why now he was raising his voice. And I think we may owe God quite a few apologies in the end if we've misunderstood why he's raised his voice. And the third angel's message is the last final warning. And God raises his voice higher than he ever has before because people have become so hard of hearing. He's about to lose vast numbers of his children and he raises his voice one last time.